All right, welcome back. Today we got a conceptual problem that's pretty fun to tie things together, especially given what we just got finished doing in Chapter 4. Uh, so the statement reads, For a configuration of charges and currents confined within a volume, with then being a keyword, show that the volume integral of the current density J is equal to the rate of change of the dipole P with respect to time, where P is a total dipole moment. Things to know for this question. The continuity equation of free charge states that the divergence of the volume current density is equal to the partial derivative of the charge distribution rho with respect to time negatively. Uh, what this means is that whatever charge is going out is taking from the total charge that was already in there. Pretty clever way of writing it. Uh, and we will also need the product rule where we take the uh, divergence of a scalar multiplied by a vector. And we will uh, go ahead and get started with it. Alright, so first things first. Let's write uh, dp dt uh, with the integral expression of p. We see that that is the time derivative of the integral rho r d tau as discussed in chapter 3 and 4. Uh, but we can take that uh, derivative and put it inside. Uh, now, thanks to Leibniz, we have to change that to uh, the partial derivative. So we have partial rho divided by partial t times r d tau. Well, lo and behold, we can apply the continuity equation to this and get negative uh, the negative divergence of the current density to substitute in. Um, however, this negative divergence need some work. So let's go ahead and apply the product rule we just discussed and examine the case in one dimension. So the product rule doesn't yield the exact uh, specification we need, but what we can tell is that if we take the divergence of x and j for the one-dimensional case, uh, we can get uh, what we see here, x times the divergence of j plus j times the gradient of x. Um, and we note that the second term in the product rule is what we have in the integral, so we'll have to do some maneuvering. Uh, but let's note that the gradient of x just goes to x hat, so that is just uh, when dotted with j goes to the, j com the x component of j, and we're left with x times the divergence of j. Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and integrate this whole expression, since we're working in integrals. Uh, so these were volume integrals. So we have the divergence of x and j, uh, the volume integral, is equal to the volume integral of x times the divergence of j, uh, plus the integral of the x component of j. Um, so, like I said, since what we have in the original equation is not what the product rule lines up with, we have to maneuver. So let's solve uh, this equation by taking the jx component and pushing it to the left-hand side, isolating the x uh, times the divergence of j integral to the right-hand side. Uh, you'll see here in the color that we have in purple something that's set up exactly for the divergence theorem, so we'll go ahead and apply that. This, uh, again, I took the right-hand side, put it to the left-hand side just for convenience sake. And we see here that uh, when applying the divergence theorem, we get the surface integral now of x, j, dotted with the uh, differential element, uh, cross-sectional element, minus the x component of j. Uh, but since j in the question stated was entirely inside the volume, we know that there's nothing on the surface, so that integral goes to zero. So this, this form here shows us that um, x times the divergence of j is equal to the uh, integral of the component of j itself. Uh, that's useful, and we can uh, generalize this to the divergence of j times the uh, r vector is equal to the negative integral, the uh, yeah negative volume integral of j itself. Well, lo and behold, we had the divergence integral of r to substitute in from the original equation we started with. And we see on the next slide that we plug this result in, and we have two negatives, thus canceling. And it indeed shows that uh, the rate of change of the dipole moment P with respect to time is equal to the volume integral of 
the volume current density. Who would have thought that this annoying dipole moment would pop up so soon again? Uh, so it must be of great importance. Um, another method to verify this result is simply use the definition that we had already discovered of what the current density is. So if we're integrating the current density, that's just equal to the infinite sum of all the charges times their velocities. Uh, but what is the velocity but the time derivative of position? So we factor, uh, so we rewrite that in terms of dt with r, and then, but what is q, uh, I times R I, but the dipole moment. It's fascinating how these things tie back together.